Hey guys, welcome back. What you're looking at here is pomelo and grapefruit, which we just finished um, um, consuming at the beginning of January. And I'm gonna take all the uh, pills <coughs> from our um, uh, feast, our lunch. That was our lunch. So, there's the bowl there ready to pick some uh, grapefruit. I picked the first one. And these babies here, this is uh, compost, which I give to the trees, as I've told you many times. And this is a recent banana that I chopped down. Actually, two bananas that I chopped down um, a couple of days ago from this clump here. So, two down. And one to go, right? Out of the uh, out of the big girls, the mums. So now all the um, the pups are growing. Remember, guys, I have to remind you once again. Many of my plants grow here for chop and drop, not only for fruit. Um, the fruit from this banana here that I cut down was um, uh, that were like little fingers, the, literally the size of my fingers. But they were very sweet uh, and I finished those yesterday I didn't film them but uh, that wasn't the purpose for the banana the purpose was chop and drop like this this is more beneficial than me having a banana for a snack right feeding the the uh, avocado tree is more beneficial okay so let's get back to our little um, video here on the grapefruit yeah I've had this tree now for about oh gee um, close to 10 years I'm not sure exactly how long guys between um, 9 and 11 years it's exactly 2 meters tall so I don't know if it's a dwarf I don't think it is but um, 2 meters in 10 years that's pretty short the lime tree behind it is 15 years old, and that's um, that's uh, almost three meters, right? That one there, and that's a Bing cherry. So, all the the new grapefruit for 2024, for this new year, is coming, right? It's very prolific. They start dropping. Um, at the beginning of spring which for us is September so from September until now January so next month if I don't pick them these are all gonna be on the ground guys they're all gonna be on the ground if I don't pick them now so this is the end and as you can see there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, what's it called that nasty gall wasp on uh, most of my citrus trees I just gave up on that. I'm not gonna fool around. I've got 30 citrus trees. I can't be, I can't be winning this battle or this war. The battle I can win, but not the war on gall wasp. So I just let it go. The tree is extremely healthy. Look, look how green it is. You can't get greener than that. And it's very prolific. It gives me over 100 grapefruit a year. 100. Like this. 100 of these. So, gall wasp to me is like at the bottom of the list to manage. Now, if the tree had problems, yes, I would deal with it. I would get to the bottom of it. But guys, there's nothing to get to the bottom of except more and more fruit, right? More and more fruit. Look, I don't have a problem. Well, the tree doesn't have a problem. The only one who has a problem is... Um, Another grower who says, can you fix your problem so the gold wasp doesn't spread to my tree? Sorry, dude. I'm not here to um, to save your tree. That's your job. Okay? I'm here to save my tree, not yours. So, all right. Let's 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 pick some, uh, some uh, grapefruit. Yeah. That's what we're here for. See how it just fell off in my hand? Told you. If I don't pick them now... They're gonna fall, look, watch this. 
but I'm picking them now, they're gonna fall and rot like a few already did over the last few months. Uh, we lost about 10 to drop, drop and rot. <laughs> Remember, there's only two of us. We can't eat every single fruit, guys. So there's gonna be um, waste. Yeah, unfortunately, there will be waste. Because as I've said many times, I'm just not gonna deal with public um, dealing with the public, let's put it that way. Okay. Okay, nice. The public wants everything for free, plus change. Free is not enough, they want change as well, in my experience. I don't know what your experience has been, guys, but uh, for me to talk this way, I must have evidently had a sour experience. Not only free, but they want change on top. It's unbelievable. I don't know where these people come from. All right, we're doing nicely. Yeah, these are the last ones for the for the 2023 season. Oh, too easy. There's another one up there. And you might say, but you can't eat all these grapefruit. <laughs> Guys, we put them in the refrigerator. That one was a bit green. Could have, could have hung on for another week or two. This one. See that? So I shouldn't have, shouldn't have forced that off. Um, okay, let's see. Just touching. Yep, when they come off that easy, 100% ready. And a little pink flush. Little pink flush. Oh, guys, it's hot. It's cloudy, but it's hot. It's beautiful. I love it. Hey, how you doing, guys? We're going to go to the beach as soon as uh, I'm done here with this video. Okay, that's the last one. Nope. Nope. See? That one doesn't want to come off. And? Nor does this. Let's see how green it is. So there's three left. Well, I wish I hadn't picked this off. Then there would have been three green ones left. I'll just let this one ripen on the kitchen table. All right, that's our little um, stash. Kim also wanted some, some oranges. And boy, oh boy, do I have oranges for her. Holy moly. Do I ever. All right. It's best to use the cutters to cut these. But you know me. I'm always doing things jungle style, guys. Jungle style. Right? In the jungle, when you get gall wasp, there's no bunnings to fix the problem. You just let nature deal with it. Right? Bunnings is Home Depot in Australia, in case you're from California. Bunnings is Home Depot or Lowe's, which we don't have in Australia. But we know all about you guys in America because you've infiltrated the, the culture here for the last 50 years. Right? We know more about you than you know about us. California. So, there's literally hundreds of oranges on this tree. This is a navel. These are ready um, between October and February or March. You can push it into March, the beginning of autumn. Oh, it doesn't want to let go. So, six months of um, pickings. And the other beauty about this tree is they don't drop. Well, occasionally they do. There's a, there's a few that have dropped. See those there? That's 10 oranges that have dropped in the last um, four months, five months. That's nothing. 
when you have 200 oranges, 10 oranges is nothing. Nothing. Okay. Whereas the Valencia orange, which I also have at the back there, behind the, the, um, that one there. Hang on. That one there is a Valencia orange. That drops all its oranges if you don't pick them. No mercy. They all drop. But the good news is, that's a winter variety orange. This one is a summer variety. Okay. And she wanted one or two pomelos. See, she sent her order out. Her order out to, uh, to myself. And I'm fulfilling her order. Now, a lot of these have dried. When you don't pick pomelo, they either drop. These are dropped. Or they dry out on the tree into leather skin. Um, right? That's what happens when you don't pick them. They turn to leather. We don't have any... Uh, we don't have anyone, guys, to share this fruit with. And if we did, um, they don't know what pomelo is. It's unknown to most people. This is a good one. Oh yeah, it just came off. So that's one. These should be picked in spring. Pomelo is ready between late winter and late spring. That is between um, August and November, December. So these are about a month. I've gone one month over the um, the uh, ideal picking times. But that's all right, guys. We're not. We're not. We're not. Um, we're not. Uh, what do you call it? No one's running the show here except me. So it doesn't matter when or how or why. Right? This is different to having your parents or your teacher on your back doing things the way it should be done. Really now. When you have your own garden, you do things your way. And that's that. Right? Yeah. Mmm, yummy. Yummy, 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 guys. So, uh, what I'm going to do is eat a grapefruit with you and for you. Right? Not the green one. Let's see, this one here that's got a pink flush. See the pink flush on that? That's the one that's ripest. Okay, I hope my phone doesn't cut out because it's really hot the phone is hot um, you can't see the heat because it's cloudy but I can guarantee you hang on let me see let's turn on the watch the watch will verify what I'm talking about oh those reflections oh my god I wish I would come out with a non-reflective screen anyway 32 Celsius it's 32 Celsius, and if you're in America, that's pretty much um, um, 90. 90 Fahrenheit, right? Yeah, okay, so let's get back to the grapefruit. All right, so let's cut this baby up. And there's that, um, that pink flush, or yeah, flush on the inside, right? It's called ruby red. But it's nowhere near red. It's more yellow than than red. All right, guys. So this is how I eat grapefruit. There's a couple of ways to do it. Uh, because it's sour, sweet, dominant uh, flavor is sour on this variety. I add sugar. Yeah, I eat it with sugar, not salt or or chili pepper. No, 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 no. Ooh, does, do you recognize this guy here? He looks familiar. What's he up to? Doesn't he look familiar? I wonder what he's trying to do. He looks like a fruit fly. Trying to find a way into the pomelo. Wow. What, dude? Caught red-handed. I think it's a fruit fly. What do you guys think? Is that what it is? Looks like one. Yeah, so we do have issues with fruit fly now in Melbourne, which we never used to. 
Anyway, these are gonna get all washed and put into the refrigerator when I'm done with this video. And now we're gonna enjoy our grapefruit. So this is how I do it, guys. I just grab the um, the grapefruit, right, and I um, coat it with sugar. I know many of you in India, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, Cambodia, is love to dip fruit into salt. Not me. Mmm. Not me, guys. <clears throat> I'm a sugar lover, not a salt lover. Wow, that was so good. That's how I like my fruit. I like it extra sweet. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Now the grapefruit tastes like it's dipped in honey. Actually, not dipped, but it tastes like it's marinated in honey. That's how we do it here at Fruitopia. Mmm. But, you know, different strokes for different folks. If you like to put salt on your sour fruit, go for it. Go for it, guys. Mmm. Oh my goodness. This is heaven. All right, guys. I think you got the drift. Another fruit that um, I'm going to be enjoying in the future, um, eating the way I just ate that, will be this one here, the Calamansi or Calamondon. This guy. It's only been in the ground for one year and he's already given us a dozen fruit right extremely healthy look how green he is this little guy <clears throat> so as i've said before citrus here is no joke plant and forget so this is a sour citrus just like the um grapefruit but it's juicier it's very very juicy and it's a different kind of sour. Um, oh, how do I describe it? It's hard to describe. Anyway, so because it's a young tree, I'm still playing around with it. So what I want to do with this Calamondon, Calamansi, which is a kumquat, by the way. Yeah, it's a kumquat, but it's, it tastes different to a kumquat. So I like to dip it into the sugar. The Filipinos like to <clears throat> make juice with this or add it to their cooking, right? When they cook. Well, guys, I'm a sweet lover. Sorry, here we go. Mmm. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Wow. I can't wait to share that with Kim. Calamansi, dipped in sugar. Holy moly! It tastes like a really, really sweet kumquat. Like a kumquat from another planet. Mmm. Wow! The yeah, calamansi on its own is way too sour for my liking. All right, guys. That's today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, now that it's midsummer in Australia. Oh, the coffee plant is um, flowering. Oh, how cute. Yeah, coffee. But you need um, a dozen coffee plants. <laughs> like this one. To get a cup of coffee. Alright, guys. I've got so much to share with you, but I have to break it up into multiple videos. That's why I'm pushing out a lot of videos. Uh, the star fruit tree here is doing great. Finally, the carambola is fully awake, as I told you it would be. I told you the star fruit and the cherry moya would be fully coated 
by the beginning of January. See how they both got their coats? That one and that one. They're not bare anymore. Remember how bare this was a month ago? Yeah, and there's a Kalamondan again. Beautiful. And our lovely ruby red grapefruit. Ah, oh, tangy. It's a tangy sour taste. All right, guys. Catch you from the next video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to um, like the video if you enjoyed it. And also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. That's my little um, Chompu Longan. Bye, guys.